In the far-flung future, humanity is on the precipice of a technological leap that will drive our civilization to a new era, constructing a Dyson sphere around the sun to harness unfathomable energy. So long as you do it better than everyone else and fight off those pesky rebels. After all, nothing says gray and blue future like a corporate lackey. Which is exactly your role in Solar Sphere, a dice worker placement where players take turns allocating their dice workers to different locations that they rolled at the beginning of the round. They get crew resources, they build sections of the sphere, and they assign drones to the communal battles that happen at the end of the round with the rebels who are trying to interfere with your ability to harness this energy. With the players who participate in successful battle reaping rewards and failure in any of the battle resulting in penalties for everyone regardless of whether you contributed anything or not. As a worker placement game, it has a familiar loop. Dice are workers, workers go to unoccupied locations getting resources which can be spent for upgrades like crew, more drones to assign for a variety of purposes, all of which act as sort of mini games to get points in one shape or form. After six rounds or complete construction of the sphere, whichever happens first, the game ends and points are added or subtracted to those amassed during the game for your prestige, the status of your workforce, and how well you balance your affiliation with the four different factions, all of which are gained as rewards for combat, crew, and building the sphere. On a macro level, Solar Sphere does little to set itself apart, though if you look a little bit deeper, there are some clever twists to the usual affair that give it a little bit more intrigue, a little spice to it, particularly at the intersection of the dice rolls, your drones, and the morale tracks. Like most dicey worker placement, when slapping your dice on an action, there is a prerequisite allocation of pips, either high or low, even or odd, or in some cases any pips will do, but the strength of the action is better the higher dice used. So low rolls are generally worse, but the lower you roll, the more bonus morale you gain, which can come from a variety of sources, but this is a big chunk of it. Which is good, because before taking any action, you can exploit as much of your workforce as you want, voluntarily dropping morale, getting kickbacks. The game's term, not mine. By default, for each wrench you pass going backwards on the morale track, you get one kickback, which can be resources, new drones, or refreshing used ones, but you get double kickbacks for wrenches that are at or below your prestige level. And refreshing and building drones is incredibly important because they can be spent to modify your dice, be sent to battles, allow you to go to action spaces that are already occupied, or heck, even scrapped permanently for immediate rewards on your luxurious player board in yet what amounts to another minigame to consider. Most curious though, and perhaps the most unique thing about the actual worker placement in this worker placement game, is that like some delayed gratification psychology experiment, you can forgo the benefits of a worker placement location that you go to, instead putting a drone on that location which will forever augment that location for you specifically, so that way it gives you a better benefit when you go there on future turns. These tasty game design riffs, along with the really lavish and surprisingly ambitious production values for such a svelte box and small company, are really what gives the game its character. That said, I wish the overall arc of the game were up to the same task. By no means bad, but for some really fascinating short-term decisions that can be made, the channels through which you traverse the gameplay are comparatively limited. Like you're given a vast workshop to facilitate all kinds of projects, but in the end, all you need is a hammer and a screwdriver. Get resources, prep drones, which are really just another form of resources, spend to build, spend to fight, get points, all with a surprising corporate bent that lacks the irony for self-reflection. Solar Sphere is is a game that does a lot with a little. It rewards deft play, efficient chains of actions, and has plenty of ways to mitigate the randomness that is inherent to games where you use a lot of dice. 
All that is to say that it's well designed and fun. But like corporate lust for massively profitable contracts, it's dry, somewhat procedural, and a lot of finely tuned endeavor for a relatively narrow scope. And that's our review. But let me know, have you played Solar Sphere? What was your experience? What did you want more of? And what did you think it absolutely nailed? Put it in the comments below. And as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. Thanks for being such an awesome community. You know that I've been Jack for the Cardboard Herald.